SpinTorque MRAM is a new type of magnetic memory. It's unique in that it's the only emerging memory that combines uh, non-volatility, which means it can be um, store information when the power is off, and also unlimited endurance, which means you can write it uh, infinitely many times. So if you look at flash memory, uh, which is what you use in your digital camera, it can only be written about 10,000 times before it wears out. Uh, so that's fine for taking photos, but if you were to use it as a working memory, it would wear out in less than a second. Uh, so SpinTorque MRAM could be used as a new type of working memory in ultra-low power applications, for example, in Internet of Things or mobile, where it can be very low power uh, when it's on uh, and storing information, and when it's not actively being used, it's zero power because it's not volatile. And also, MRAM can be scaled to very small dimensions. The basic building block, a magnetic tunnel junction, can be made as small as 11 nanometers in size. And that means that we could make very dense and fast MRAM chips in the future that could be used as uh, fast cache memory in uh, IBM servers. IBM's John Slonczewski invented SpinTorque MRAM 20 years ago. He published a paper where he described how you could use uh, the transfer of spins from one magnetic layer to the other to write uh, information in a magnetic memory. And uh, we've developed ma magnetic materials now to enable us to do that. And recently we have published a paper that shows we can scale the magnetic tunnel junction down to 11 nanometers in size. That's about 10,000 times smaller than the diameter of a human hair. And we showed that we could write a bit with just seven and a half microamps. That's a tiny amount of current which will enable us to use very small transistors and thus make a much denser MRAM chip. And furthermore, we also showed that we could write that bit very reliably uh, with a write error rate of seven times 10 to the minus 10 errors per switch. What that means is that if you were to write this bit a billion times, you would get less than one error. And this comes about, this uh, um, write error rate is a fundamental property of spin torque MRAM. It's because you have two magnetic layers. There's a fixed layer and there's a free layer, and the free layer stores the information in a zero or one, depending on whether the north pole is pointing up or down. And there's actually no spin torque when those two layers are perfectly aligned. So when you start to write, nothing happens until thermal fluctuations actually knock the free layer out of equilibrium. So you're actually waiting for thermal fluctuations to get you started. And then the spin torque can take over and switch the bit. So one of the good things about spin torque MRAM is that it's easy to embed it on the same chip as logic and other functions. Um, uh, this is because the MRAM device, the magnetic tunnel junction, is a compact device and it's very robust and easy to process. For example, it only takes three masks to process the MRAM part of the uh, process route compared to more than 10 masks for making flash. Uh, this means that uh, flash memory is becoming more and more expensive to embed. At the 28 nanometer node, people will still embed flash memory, but it's getting very expensive. MRAM may become less expensive around that point, and certainly at more advanced nodes, it'll be preferable to use MRAM compared to flash. Furthermore, MRAM is much faster to write, 100,000 times faster to write than flash. So we see that MRAM could be scaled to very small sizes, and that may enable us to make very dense chips with a large number of bits on them. High performance computing, cognitive computing requires a lot of memory, it requires dealing with large amounts of data. And memory is usually the bottleneck in these systems. So if we can make MRAM as dense as we think we can, get down to that 10 nanometer size that we've demonstrated in the lab, then we could really use MRAM in uh, IBM's high speed, uh, high performance computing systems. So one of the big breakthroughs we made was to develop new perpendicular magnetic materials. By that I mean the magnetization of the magnet is pointing perpendicular to the plane of the film instead of in the plane. All the other companies were using in-plane magnetized materials. You can make spin torque MRAM that way, but it's not very exciting. And the reason is that it doesn't scale well. These in-plane materials take a lot of current to switch. And we've known for many years, for 20 years since John Slonczewski's original paper came out, that the preferred way to do it is with perpendicularly magnetized materials. But we couldn't do it because we didn't have the magnetic materials. But then about six years ago, we discovered a simple material set that allowed us to take the magnetization, rotate it out of the plane, and that's what's allowed us to really scale spin torque MRAM.